Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley back with another How to Draw video. A few years back I did a video on how to draw a manga eye line by line. It was a popular video, but the uh, resolution was pretty low, and so I have decided to uh, kind of redo that video. Not exactly the way that I did it before, but sort of the same basic approach. I drew the hair uh, and the, you know, the shape of the head and the nose and the mouth and all these other lines except the eyes. And uh, I'm going to be able to focus that way exclusively on drawing the eyes, hopefully do it all real time. So let's go ahead and get into it. And you can see that I drew a couple of very light guidelines right here and here to give myself a sense of how big the eyes ought to be. I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and start drawing the first of the two eyes. Now, notice this shape. Um, it's a, kind of difficult to describe. I always think of it as a little bit of a triangular shape. Uh, I suppose it looks a little bit like a, uh, a heart on its side, in a way, just that bottom part of it. But this is going to be the upper eyelash here, and uh, it curves down uh, from the top to the side, and then over here, there's a little bit of a hook, okay? Now, I'm not going to get too much into the details. I'm getting, giving you the placement of it, and then I'm going to zoom in so that you can get a little more, um, you know, of a detailed view when I start to shade in and so forth. But let's just get the basics of the uh, eyelashes, which I did here, and then the large ovalish shape of the, um, the iris which in this point of view, we've got her turned away looking back at us. Uh, this oval is really moved uh, considerably over here to the left side of things. And uh, again, I'll save the details for a little bit later on, but let's go ahead and do the second eye because this can give people a lot of trouble. They say, you know, I draw the first eye, it looks great. I draw the second eye, it doesn't match. Uh, and a lot of times, especially from this point of view, it shouldn't match exactly. Um, it needs to be compressed a little because the face is turning away from us. And so I'm kind of repeating this whole thing, but uh, compressing it from uh, side to side so that it takes up considerably less space. And that, this will give you that classic sort of uh, manga look. Uh, and then again, I think before uh, going into any more detail, I'm going to add just the, uh, the eyebrows, which come in here um, pretty much between the uh, upper eyelash and the uh, hairline, maybe just a touch closer. Uh, but notice how far the eyebrow goes before it stops. And over here, it's going to kind of start uh, shifted over a little closer to the right-hand side of this drawing, again, because of the way her face is turned away from us. Now, I'm going to go ahead and refocus the camera so that I can get into the details of the eyes. All right, well, I'm going to try to keep this moving because I would love for this all to be done in real time uh, rather than using time lapse. And so I've got this upper eye uh, lash. The first little detail I'm going to add here is a little line here for the uh, fold of the upper eyelid. Then I, in this style, I'm going to do two highlights. I'm going to put one here and then a smaller one down here. Okay, these are the white areas that remain white even after you've shaded everything else in. Uh, this is a fairly exaggerated manga eye, so I'm going to give her really a really big pupil, you know, really humongous uh, compared to what it would be like in real life. And that pretty much gives us the, uh, the details of this. Notice that there's just a little bit of a gap right here. I don't actually outline the entire eye over here. A little bit of a gap um, in the lower eyelash. Let's move over here. We're going to repeat pretty much exactly the same thing, just uh, as we said before, compressed from one side to the other. Notice that if I make one uh, highlight large and the other small, I've got to be careful to replicate that, uh, uh, the proportion of that on the other side. And now it is uh, time for me to uh, pick up my trusty black Prismacolor, which is a colored pencil, uh, just getting that fold of the upper eye. Uh, lid there. I'm switching to this black Prismacolor. This is just my style. You might want to uh, use permanent ink. Uh, the main thing is to get some sort of permanent line that comes in here uh, on top of the guidelines that you've put uh, to begin with, and then when you erase, this line will stick around while you get rid of your uh, rough guidelines. Now, this upper eyelash for a female character, of course, quite thick to indicate full eyelashes but I want to get into how we uh, shade in this eye because that's kind of the main uh, focus of the video from here on out. Uh, uh, I'm darkening in the edge of this oval area 
Um, my style is to let these highlights sort of bleed into the same uh, white of the eye. I see that quite frequently. Uh, and then here's where we're going to start to get into some shading. Uh, darkening in the lower eyelash, not nearly as much as the upper uh, eyelash, I find. Uh, darkening in this hook here. And then I'm going to start uh, going straight into the pupil, just shading it in. Not completely black. Sometimes I see these things are left a little bit uh, just as a dark gray, say. And uh, here's one of the keys I find is to start dark at the top and then you let up on the pencil so that it gets progressively lighter as you reach the bottom. And uh, you can go quite light down here. I think that it helps give a, a certain three-dimensional quality uh, to the drawing if there's a big contrast between this very deep, dark black up here, uh, a fairly dark area within uh, the pupil, and then uh, just sort of gradually lightening it up as we go down. And as quickly as I can, I'm going to try to uh, reproduce the same thing over here. Uh, again, I don't want to break down and do my <laughs> usual time lapse, which is what I like to do to keep the videos short. But, uh, you know, you're constantly, even though you're looking at what you're drawing, you're constantly checking over here to make sure that you're replicating it. And that's really, you know, there's no magic bullet way to solve this problem of one eye not matching the other. It's just practice makes perfect, and you just have to uh, really hold yourself to a high standard of accuracy as you try to uh, uh, draw this second eye so that it matches the first. But it certainly helps to maybe put down that initial uh, guideline that I put down there that you know helps me place the eyes at least so they're in the right spot. And I think that pretty much does it. Uh, I find that these outer edges, you know, darkening that in can be quite helpful for uh, completing the, the final effect. I'm going to just darken in the uh, eyebrow, and I think we will be done. Give me just a second. I am going to uh, clean up this uh, drawing, uh, which is to say to erase the uh, initial guidelines, and then we'll be back with some final words. All right, well, I think we're pretty much done. Um, except, no, we're not done. Quill, you are not done. You have not done the blushies. You have not done... Okay, now you're all right. Now you're done. You've done the blushies. Okay, okay, great. So uh, we're pretty much done with this illustration now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I want to thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my graphic novels, Miki Falls, Brody's Ghost, and my new How to Draw manga book, Mastering Manga. should be out any day now in actual bookstores like Barnes & Noble and uh, hopefully your local favorite bookstore. Um, but let's go ahead and lay this pencil down. I uh, really want to thank you for subscribing, for watching my videos, for supporting me all the different ways that you do. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be back with another one real soon.